Chapter nine talks about people, another one of the six P's of retail strategy. Um, this chapter, we're focusing on employees, and we know that human resource management and employees are one of the ways in which a retailer can build a sustainable competitive advantage. So chapter nine begins with a conversation on human resource management. And human resource management is responsible for aligning the capabilities and behaviors of our employees with the goals of our retailers. So we'll talk about how they align the capabilities of our employees with the goals of our retail establishment. One thing to note about human resource management is that it's the largest cost for retailers, averaging in about 10% of revenues every year. Um, the reason it's so high is because you have to pay your employees, uh, you have to train your employees, um, and the bigger investment you make, the higher return you'll get. So what we're gonna start by doing uh, is looking at performance measures, and then we'll talk about some challenges of HR, um, and then we'll start talking about some legal issues and human resources. So let's start with some human resource management objectives and performance measures. One way to measure your employees um, is on productivity. And productivity is based around increasing employee productivity, of course, and it's the sales generated per employee. So there's a calculation for human resource productivity, and that equation looks like this. As a retailer, you take your net sales and you divide that by the number of full-time employees that you have working for your company, and you can get a productivity number. So basically, right, we're looking at sales per employee. Um, we want this to be very high. The national average is about $206,000. So pretty good um, if you're making $206,000 per employee that you have in your store. Now this is a national average, so it includes everything from Walmart to your small independent boutique. Um, with productivity, the higher the ratio, the better. A second way we can measure performance is based on turnover. And turnover is measuring the number of employees who voluntarily leave their jobs. Um, and turnover is very important because retailers put a lot of inputs, a lot of money, a lot of time into training your employees. So you really don't want your employees to leave and you definitely don't want them to leave voluntarily. So the way that retailers measure turnover is they take their number of employees who leave voluntarily divided by their number of full-time positions. And this gives us our employee turnover. And the national average for turnover is about 3.3%. And this is for all employment. In retail, it's closer to 5%. So if you have a 5% employee turnover or something higher than 5%, you need to work to decrease that. And one way to decrease turnover is to increase your employee satisfaction. So make them happy. Make sure that they're not leaving voluntarily to go to other jobs. The third performance measure I want to talk about is engagement. Um, engagement is the emotional commitment by an employee to the organization. And retailers work to increase employee engagement because they want them to be emotionally committed so therefore, right, we can lower our turnover. Engagement cannot be measured by a formula. Um, <clears throat> companies do have annual engagement surveys where they ask employees if they feel connected to the company, they ask employees what they like about working in there, what they don't like, and they can try to get some feedback that way, but there really isn't a mathematical formula like we have for productivity and turnover. The reason that retailers want their employees to be engaged is because satisfied employees are gonna expend an extra effort on behalf of the retailer. Um, they're motivated to support the retailer. They want their customers to be satisfied. They want to sell products to the customers. And so they're gonna spend a lot of extra effort, which is going to increase your overall sales at your retail store. Um, the issue with this is that some companies view employees as a cost and not an investment. And when you minimize labor cost, you start to cut hours and therefore pay. So your employees aren't happy. So they might reduce their customer service levels, which can actually have a long-term negative effect on your sales. So retailers have to understand that employees really truly are an investment. And the more we invest in our employees, the more likely they are to help us increase our sales. There was a study that found that an additional $1 salary increase 
can lead to an additional $4 to $28 in sales each month per employee because those motivated sales associates offer better service and therefore get more sales. So those are three performance measures that retailers use when they're looking at human resource management. Let's now talk about um, organizational structure. So organizational structure is one of the activities that is uh, completed by the human resource team for a retailer. Um, this is one of the issues that HR professionals face is how they should appropriately design the organizational structure and how to assign responsibility and authority for all of the tasks that need to be done in a retail store. So an organizational structure does two things. First, it identifies the activities to be performed by a specific employee. So imagine each of these boxes in this organizational structure is a job. And within each box is a list of tasks. All right, so what the organizational structure is primarily supposed to do is assign tasks to an individual employee. The second thing that organizational structure does is determine the lines of authority and responsibility in a firm. Generally, if you are sitting in that third row there, you're reporting to people in the second row. Um, so you're reporting to the person above you. So the person at the top has the most authority and the most responsibility within the store. So we know that each of these box identifies a list of tasks to be performed by an employee. Let's talk about all of the different tasks that are performed in retail firms. The first group of tasks is called strategic management tasks. And these tasks are often performed by senior management of the retail firm. So the CEO, the board of directors. Um, if you're an independent retailer, it's generally performed by the owner. Um, and this list of tasks can be found in your textbook in chapter nine. Um, so don't feel the need to write them all down right now, but this just gives you an idea of some of the tasks completed by strategic management teams. The strategic management team is responsible for developing the overall retail strategy. So coming up with all of the six P's for the retail um, establishment, making sure that the deci decisions are made strategically in an effort to make profit, um, and so all of those are listed out there. Another group of tasks are what we call the administrative tasks. Administrative tasks are generally performed by corporate managers who have specialized skills in these specific tasks. So there's a lot of them here, but you'll notice that marketing is at the top. So a marketing manager is going to be responsible for promotion. Um, a human resource manager will be responsible for human resources, supply chain manager, a CFO, a merchandising manager, an IT manager, and a lawyer. Um, so all of these are administrative tasks that must be done. And generally, these tasks are completed at a corporate headquarters location. So the people completing administrative tasks and the strategic management tasks generally are found working in a um, national or regional headquarter location. These folks aren't doing their work out of the retail store. So the next group of tasks is merchandise management. Uh, merchandise management includes category managers, buyers, and merchandise planners. Um, and these people are involved in all of the tasks that deal with management. And sometimes merchandise uh, management folks work in a corporate or regional headquarters, but sometimes they work within an individual store and are managed by the store management. And so some of the tasks that these folks are responsible for include buying merchandise. So they're the ones negotiating with the vendors, they're the ones actually selecting the merchandise and placing orders. Um, this group of people is also responsible for uh, controlling the merchandise and generally, these people are responsible for setting initial prices. The last group of tasks completed in a retail store are the store management tasks. Um, these tasks are performed by the store manager, and these are the day-to-day -day decisions that directly affect performance at an individual store. Now, there is varying amounts of control amongst store managers, but the more control 
that upper management gives to the store manager, the more successful the retailer tends to be. Um, so if we allow our store manager to make decisions and control his store, he's going to feel, he or she is going to feel more engaged with the retailer and therefore they're going to perform better and it's going to have a positive impact overall. Um, so here are some of the tasks that are completed by the store management team. Um, store management is generally responsible for recruiting, hiring, and training employees. They set the labor schedules. They evaluate their store personnel. Store management um, are responsible for maintaining the store facilities. They're responsible for displaying merchandise uh, and repairing anything that needs to be done. Um, store managers have to handle the customer complaints. Uh, they take inventory and they prevent shrinkage. So we're going to go into great detail on some of these store management tasks when we get to chapter 16. Um, but the store manager has great responsibility for the retailer. So all of these tasks, how are they done? Um, it seems like you would need an army of folks to run a retail store. Uh, but that's not always the case. We don't always have a large corporate retail chain. Um, in fact, more than 95% of retail firms have only one location. And 58% of retail establishments have less than five employees. So most retail firms are single store retailers. So how do they accomplish all these tasks? Uh, here's a quick look at how they might do that. Um, if you just have a few employees, you might have your owner who is making all of your strategic management tasks uh, decisions, and you might have an accountant doing your finances, you might have a store manager and a salesperson, and you might have one merchandise manager who does everything from buying merchandise to advertising the merchandise. So you can get it done with just a few people, um, especially if you do just have one or two locations. Uh, but this is a look at what a national retail chain organizational structure would look like. And as you can see, it is much bigger. There are many more people um, involved. If you look at the um, yellow boxes there, you have a vice president of stores, you have regional managers, regional planners, down to your individual store managers. So you've got lots of people helping to make decisions for the many retail stores that you have. Um, so this is the first part of chapter nine. We've talked about performance measures to make sure we are being successful with our employees. And we've also looked at the organizational structure and how retail tasks get allocated and accomplished. Um, so next, in the next lecture, we will talk about some more strategic issues that human resource professionals have to manage.